Just to be really honest, I struggle with fear. That's mm -hmm. something that I deal with. I've dealt with it for years and years. <clears throat> I'm on my journey to get free. But sometimes I've noticed with myself, it can try to keep me from living the life I need to, just as a mother, as a wife, and as a child of God. So my mm -hmm. question would be, how, what steps would you say would help someone like me or people watching get free from fear, which can just be tormenting and horrible to deal with? Um. It's, it's hard when you fight against fear. It's better when you fight for love. Love mm -hmm. casts out fear. Mm -hmm. And if you put your efforts into, into the antidote and not yeah. put your effort into fighting the problem, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot better. Because sometimes we make things bigger when we fight them. Yeah. Our attention actually exalts them. We don't, we don't mean for that to happen, but... We're so devoted to seeing this addiction beaten or this fear beaten or, you know, whatever it might be. Yeah. And we're so focused on seeing that thing defeated that we actually, we actually make it bigger than what it is. And, have uh, too much. Yeah. And when you set your, love casts out fear. So when you set your heart on being loved by the Father and you discover the perfect, unending love that, uh, that is better than we could possibly imagine, and it's got to be more than a concept, though. It's discovered through encounter. And so you, you just take time in the presence. You know, I've done this. I've sat down. I said, God, I said, I'm not going to sing. I'm not going to pray. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit here for just a few minutes and just let you love me. And okay. so I just, I just stop all the things that I know to do to, uh, to mm -hmm. touch God and to be changed and just sit there. And just turn my affection on him and just sit there. I try to do that every night when I go to sleep. I just right. turn my heart's affection on him. And what happens <clears throat> is there's such a, such a, a love encounter that it starts, starts recalibrating that, that, that part of our life. And, and uh, if, if love casts out fear, then I just I really need to experience the love more. You trust and, the Father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, it, but it's not connected to performance. <clears throat> it's not connected to me fasting. It's not connected to me declaring all those things I believe in. It's not connected to me getting a breakthrough in worship, I, and I believe in that. <clears throat> it's not even necessarily connected to, you know, quoting scriptures that are fitting for your situation. All those are useful tools. Um, it's just literally just experiencing the embrace of a father, and it just it calms so many things. It settles so many issues. Not true. That uh, just slowing down enough inside that. That, uh, that, that I shift my attention from what I need to do to be right yeah. to what he's already done for me that made me right. Mm. Love that. Yeah. yeah, I agree. It's funny because I bought all those books, <coughs> like the quoting things. And yeah, yeah. They, they're great, <coughs> but they never helped me. But like you said, if I go in prayer, I'm like, okay, God, I'm really struggling today. Just let me love you and love me, and, and yeah. I, I just need your help today. That's when I feel peace. It's only in those moments. Yeah. Not... Not quoting everything, like like you said, those are needed. But when I just love on him, that's when I feel free. Right. But then right. you go back to daily life sometimes, and you're like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But just do that more than. The one thing I know we encouraged, uh, one of our kids really battled with fear a lot growing up. <clears throat> and I, in, in the middle of the night, I would <clears throat> be with him, just teach him what to do and, and how to respond in these situations. Uh, what warfare was like, and you know how to how to how to engage correctly, how to turn your affection towards the Lord, th things like that. And uh, and one day I, I told him, I said, when you go to sleep tonight, if you have a problem, come get me. It's, that's not a problem. But before you, before you do, ask God to speak to you. And so I saw him that he didn't get me that night, and he had been coming in pretty regular. I says. So, did you have a good night last night? He said, no, it's horrible. I said, why didn't you come in? He said, because I did what you said. Yeah. I said, well, what happened? He says, well, God spoke to me. And he has this verse that he has memorized backwards and forwards and upside down. And it was a word that God spoke to him because our life is in his yeah. voice. It's in the word. And, um, Say that again, Pastor Bill. Our, life, our, is our life is in the voice. It's in the word. He is, he is the word made flesh. Right. So whenever he speaks, that is presence. That's right. He said, my words to you are spirit. So when he spoke, the spirit of God became manifest. So uh, we live because of what he says to us. Mm -hmm. And so if we can disconnect it from our performance, but still be open to hearing and having him speak to us, 
What I tell people to do is get into Psalms, read till you hear your voice. Read till you hear your voice, and then you'll find his. Huh. And, uh, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, and, and, it, and it happened. So he has, he has a, a, a personal weapon that he, that he got on his own. He didn't, it wasn't just something that I handed him, which is useful. But, uh, but when you get it yourself, you never forget it. He found a smooth stone. He did. Yeah, yeah, he did. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it can get. It, <coughs> there's probably people watching who, yeah. who struggle. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, specifically since we pray for the sick. Uh, well, I think you know we. The fear can kind of come in that regard. It's crazy because you know we grow up seeing. I grew up especially seeing sick people all the time, and you see bad things happen to good people, yeah. and gosh, you see so many people get healed too. So you think that that would build your faith, but. Some people might be like me where you can focus on the bad. Like instead of you might see 10 people get healed from cancer, but one person didn't get healed and you'll go, oh my gosh, why didn't that person oh, yeah, get healed? Absolutely. That was such a good person. So, and yeah. I, I talk to many friends and they say they deal with it too. And mm -hmm. that's kind of, I think sometimes being in ministry, seeing all the stuff you see, mm -hmm. it, it can hurt you sometimes even more because it's, you try to question it. And what would you say to somebody that's questioning, why does God let that happen? Because we see such bad things happen to good people. What would be your response to them and to me so we can understand why these things sometimes happen? I, I personally don't think he let it happen. Right. Okay, yeah. He, he equipped us to deal with it. You know, he, he, Jesus modeled it and he never turned anyone away. Everyone was healed, he ministered to. Everyone was healed that the Father directed him to. And, uh, and so, you know, when he walked by the pool of Bethesda, only one guy got healed. Everyone else he left was still sick. You know, if that were to happen today, the newspaper people and TV people and theologians would be interviewing all the people around the pool that didn't get healed. What did it feel yeah. like for him to walk by you? True. Because yeah. um, what the enemy wants us to do is to focus on what didn't happen instead of what did happen. If I focus on what did happen, it equips me to fill in what didn't happen. It equips me to address what didn't happen.